cult classic is a film that, while perhaps not being very popular at its original release, eventually garners a large following and has a bit of a resurgence. The Thief and the Cobbler is a great example of this. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about The Thief and Cobbler, a little known animation film, and use it as a bit of a platform to talk about animation as such as well. I think it's good to know about due to the fact that it's a kind of a unique little known film and it has some great examples of animation. Now to start off, Kit Leiborn described in his book, the animation book, of animation being in terms of 24 frames per second. And animating on ones means that every one of these 24 frames is a new frame that hand drawn. Animating on twos would mean every other of these frames being hand drawn, meaning there's only 12 new frames per second. Now I'm going to cover the conception, the creation, the release, and the resurgence of the film. The, the conception occurs with Richard Williams depicted here and his small animation studio outside out of London. At the time he was doing animation on a Eastern folklore film in which he develops a set of characters that he then takes away from this event and uses to develop the film The Thief and the Cobbler. Thus, his humble beginnings. He uses that he then takes his own money to help fund the creation of the film and does so by creating animation such as this that is put on ones. Him being a very big stickler for uh, quality animation and wanting the whole film to be on ones. This takes a long time and from about the 1960s, since like the 19, late 1960s to about mid 1970s, he only animates about 10 minutes of film being due to it being paid out of his own pocket. He shows this to Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers thinks, wow, this looks great, and asks him to, di asks him to, to direct the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Who Framed Roger Rabbit ends up being a success and he is, allowed, he is then given funding by Warner Brothers to produce The Thief and the Cobbler. However, things are become a bit difficult as Richard Williams has a hard time achieving the timestamps and the money amounts that he's been given, as in he would often go over budget. This is due to him wanting to animate exclusively on ones and doing animation such as this with that's very high quality, but highly difficult and highly time consuming. This causes this is fine. This ends up being a finale where Richard Williams is supposed to show a test cut of the film. And yet, according to Richard Williams himself in a British Film Institute interview, he fails to have the pri the penultimate uh, visual for the penultimate scene due to the film reel being missing. Warner Brothers kind of doesn't like how this is proceeding and decides to back out. A third party comes in via Warner Brothers and finishes the film due to the rights still belonging to Warner Brothers. This film is then released in terms of the princess and the cobbler. This is just a cut of all the pieces that were finished, cut together. It's missing a lot of large scenes. This is released in 1993 to very little success in South Africa and Australia. Then the film company Miramax acquires the rights to the film in 19 and produces a cut that they release in 1994 to only about garnering a budget of, of only gaining about $300,000 while at the cost of about $24 million production. This is the visual from that film. Uh, this is according to Mark Dubbins from his Animatio article. Then this is the end of any of official releases of the film. Then the resurgence. In 2006, a man named, by the name of Gilcrest decides to put out a call to action for animators and tries to collect all the pieces of film and, that were lost or unused and slowly over time builds up a several different cuts being released from 2006 to 2013 under the, the name The Thief and the Cobbler Recobbled Cut. And thus I've covered the conception, the release, the conception, the creation, the release, and the resurgence of the film The Thief and the Cobbler. I hope that you possibly consider looking into it yourself. It's available on YouTube under the name The Thief and the Cobbler Recobbled Cut, and it's available to watch for free and without ads. 
And now I hope to have broadened your understanding of animation a little bit and perhaps let you know about something that's, you know, on a bit more of the uncommon side. Thank you very much.